hey guys hello beautiful glam girls glam fam welcome back to another video so i did my makeup very fall like today um i don't know if i love it or not the lips are kind of like patchy i use new stuff so if things look a little weird it's because i use new products so yeah i use like some drugstore eyeshadow today drugstore lip so i'm trying different things because i want to bring you guys more makeup content um if you follow me on instagram gabriela lascano right here <laughs> link down below as well um oh i forgot to put my ring on I've been doing more IGTV makeup tutorials, but I've been trying to film IGTV and YouTube videos at the same time now to kind of maximize my content production. So that's what I mean. So I'm trying to bring you more. So if you follow me on Instagram, you can get makeup videos there now. But if you wait, I'm going to start bringing more makeup to my YouTube again because that's where I started. That's what you guys want. And I want to make you happy. So anyway, today's video is another request. You guys have been requesting. Um coffee table talks again you know, and everything on this list i have watched completely if the show's finished i watched the whole show or i've watched up until where it currently is so. i didn't put like obvious choices like riverdale stranger things i wanted it to be more shows that people may have not heard of or shows that are a little bit underrated or shows that maybe only had a couple seasons so they don't have you know a huge following but they're worth the binge because i think most of us watch netflix to binge so anyway, I got my coffee. Follow me on Instagram. You saw that we got an espresso machine. So I'm like obsessed right now with making coffees and like different drinks. And I got these really cool insulated mugs on Amazon. I also have an Amazon store. I will leave that down below. So yeah, enough blabbering. Let's get into my top picks. I couldn't do 10 because I wanted it to be like genuine picks. So there's 14, which is so random. But it works because I put them in a list. I put them in order and I'll explain what the categories are. Anyway, yeah, I'm crazy. Let's get into it. <laughs> what else I want to say? None of these are really comedies. If they are comedic, it's like a dark humor. Right, so number 14 is this show called What If. Um, I think it got canceled. It only had one season. It, that's why it's number 14 and not the best and the reason it's on this list is like i said this is my underrated slash best shows it was very suspenseful it was thrilling um the 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 three main actors which was renee zellweger and then the main um couple of the the show i guess the two of them weren't like the best actors. They were decent. It wasn't good enough for another season, but it was it was pretty good. But Renee Zellweger was really good. I really liked her performance. I like Renee a lot. Um, I actually met her when I worked at Sephora, and it was like you know only a few years after Chicago, and I was so starstruck. She came in and bought a blow dryer, and she like gave me the box to throw out, and then she put the blow dryer in her purse. She was like, I don't need a box, and I was just like doing the whole thing normal, and then right before she left, I was like, I loved you and chicago and she was like thank you she was so so sweet the story it was interesting it was like suspenseful it had like scary moments it was just like a thrilling show like i said it wasn't the best thing ever but if you're looking for something to binge that's kind of suspenseful decent acting kind of dark it's almost like if the people who made Fifty Shades of Grey made like a suspenseful thriller type of show like that's how it kind of feels It's not like the best thing ever, but like I said, it's decent enough for something to binge I liked it for the one season Um, I would watch a second season if they had it like I said I liked Renee's character and the story was interesting and a little bit different than um, just regular plot lines that you find so that's my least favorite but definitely worth watching if you're really just like I've watched everything and I just want something to binge what if number 13 is called glitch i just finished watching this with my husband well i watched a lot of it alone but he was like in there in between watching it with me uh, it was so disappointing because the first two seasons were so good the story is so interesting it's about this town in australia called urana where people come back from the dead i'm not good with the australian accent i'm better with a british accent but anyway i won't i won't attempt mate so a bunch of people come back from the dead and they just try to figure out why and then things go crazy and you can imagine people coming back from the dead things might go awry so it definitely has its moments where it's a little like huh it has a little bit of a lost vibe and i know a lot of people like lost and a lot of people like me hated lost because it was like you were lost watching this show um <laughs> 
but the moments when it's good it's really good the acting was really good the plot itself had had some holes um but it was really good the story was fun it was suspenseful again it has that thrilling suspenseful kind of vibe and if you're american or you're obviously not australian it's fun to see australia and something different because all of you know when you're from new york every movie every tv show is set in new york or chicago or california la and like i've been those places they all look the same to me so it's kind of like blah so it's fun to see something different. I think the whole idea of like people coming back from the dead and this idea of like the universe and purpose and like all these these deeper thinking ideas more than just like money being a motivation or things like that. Um, that's what really kind of brought me in. You know, with something deeper than shows that we always watch that are about money and power and sex and blah blah blah. So number 12 is the only comedy here and this show is called Great News. Nicole Richie's on this show. There's a few people you might recognize that were in some comedies, some movies. People that you might recognize who are not like A-list actors but definitely, you know, recognizable. Mm -hmm. The main character is a, a girl who's like big, a little bit bigger than the kind of girls you see. She's not like fat but she's definitely more full figured so I like the fact that she's the lead and the the, the love story in the show is not like the typical boring stuff it's a little bit more comedic and light and cute and sweet and there's a, a nice story where the main character and her mother go through a lot of transitions and it's just a sweet show and it is funny it's kind of quirky and it's set in a uh, newscaster setting all right the next one is, is a good show but it's on the list because it's on the lower side of the list because it only had one season and I think also it got a little crazy so the story kind of just like lost itself for me but it was really good to watch and I wish they had more time to um, dig into it and like you know get flesh the story out more and this show is called happy and <laughs> I said it like very happy but the show is not happy at all it's super dark and like Fucked up. It stars Christopher Malone, Maloney, right? That's how you say his name? From SVU, of course. What a daddy. Daddy for life. Um, he's just, whoo, gets you misty. Anyway, so he's the main star of the show. And it's him and this little talking, flying unicorn who is obviously cartoon. And yeah, the show is, I don't even know how to describe it besides the main plot is like he used to be a cop. And he's all, he's a drunk and his life is all messed up. And he sees this little unicorn and they go on crazy adventures. And it, it's, it's weird, it's gritty, it's uncomfortable at times because you have like this childlike stuff that comes up in the show paralleled with his like drug addiction and alcoholism and he just can't stop saying the f word which i love but it's just so funny um and messed up and it's just interesting it's very interesting worth a watch um yeah I, I don't know how to describe it besides that and i wish they had more chance to flesh the story out because the direction it was going in was very interesting. All right, so from here up, these are all shows that I actually all love. Besides the first like three, I think these next six are actually all the same. So it was really hard to put them in a, in like different numbers. It's just Altamar, so high C. So you can watch it in different languages. I believe it's available. I know it's available in English and Spanish, so I watched it in both. And it's available, I believe, in French. <laughs> this story is basically has a lot of Titanic vibes. The whole story takes place on a ship on the ocean and it's a murder mystery it's really really cool uh i really enjoyed it i cannot wait for the next season i think it's so good the quality of the show is amazing it looks better than a lot of movies the actresses are fabulous the actors are fabulous the story is really really cool it twists and turns and like i said if you like titanic and you want to see that like but with a thrilling murder mystery this is the show for you. It's really, really good. Like I said, I think it takes place in the 20s, 30s, 40s. Dang. Maybe 40s. I think the 40s. Um, and it's just really, really cool because you see like all this vintage stuff. And I mean, it's just a great show and it just takes twists and turns. And it's just like 
it's not as corny and like overdone as novelas it's actually a really good drama nothing wrong with novelas i'm a novela girl grew up on novelas Mari, man. Ow! like hello but this one is more of like a serious drama mystery okay, so the next one is number nine and this one is called Ag agresuko okay, so this show is called agresuko and I don't know if I'm saying it more like with a Spanish accent, like Aglesuko, but <laughs> it's um, it's a I believe a Japanese show. Yes, Aglesuko, also known by its original original Japanese title, Ag Aggressive Retsuko, um, is a Japanese anime musical comedy. So this is the character. They're all animals, and they are um, you know, cute little characters like Hello Kitty style, you know, um, animation and. It is a really deep, kind of interesting look at the 20-something woman who's single in Japan and she works in the city. So it's similar to a coming of age of someone who lives in New York or Chicago because, hello, she works in the big city. And she's, you know, just out of college and it's a few years later and they show you, like, how she used to be this happy, young, 20-something, you know, vibrant looking at life vibrantly and all this stuff and then now a little bit later in her 20s how things have gone downhill and she uses music as an outlet for these problems that she holds inside and all these feelings inside and it was very interesting and they you know it actually got a lot deeper in the second season and she you know faces a lot of things that I think in your 20s and 30s you do face it's funny there's this little cute character and she sings you have to see. You have to see because I can't give it away. Okay, so number eight is Working Moms. This is a Canadian show. So it's on TV in Canada and then after the, the season airs over there, they put it on American Netflix. So it is really, really good. It stars people that you've probably seen. The main character of your Canadian, you might recognize some of these actors. Um, I recognize one of them from like comedy stuff, the, the main one. Um, so yeah, it's a show about <laughs> working moms and they all have different situations. There's one that's in a lesbian couple with an adopted daughter. There is a couple who have another interesting relationship and then you know everyone just has their different relationships and then the central two characters are best friends for a long time and then there's a group of mothers and there's actually a father as well and they all have this um like child group care thing that they go to for like advice on parenting and the show revolves on all their different circumstances and relationships and it is very real and um it can be funny but it's definitely a nice like gritty realistic it's a more realistic and gritty view on being a working mother and the stresses of being married or not being married or like just things people go through cheating and heartbreak and parents dying and children you know child care and just like all the things you go through and it's a really really good show number seven is another one that's a really really trippy show again introspective less you know fun and whatever it's more like i said introspective and deeper and just weird and quirky but um also kind of dirty in a way and this is russian doll so this show is by natasha leon who is from well, she's from a lot of things, and she's been famous for a really long time, but a lot of you probably know her from Orange is the New Black. She plays Nikki, the curly-haired, famous lesbian that we all love and secretly want to date. <laughs> so I love, love, love her. And, um, yeah, it's her show. She, I believe, wrote and, like, um, came up with the show, right, wrote it. Um, it's, it's her show. And she stars in it, and it's a really, really interesting show. I definitely think it's better to watch it blindly. Don't look anything up about it, just watch it. It's different. It is emotional. It is confusing. It's trippy. It's deep. It's introspective. It's sad. It is um, gritty. It's just a really good show. It's based in New York, of course. Um, but it's a lot of New York at night, which I love. I'm getting goosebumps. Like, I literally can't. Like, I actually want to rewatch it after some time when I've forgotten a little bit of it because I wish I could watch it again for the first time. It is so good. So, yeah. Don't want to ruin anything for you. Just go watch it. Go watch okay. it. Okay. Number six is The Sinner. So, this one is really, really good. Again, it's another, like, kind of crime, thriller, suspenseful kind of show. So, it's more of an anthology show. The first season, I believe, was a couple years ago and that one starred Jessica Biel and that 
um, first season was amazing. I actually, that was before it was on Netflix when it came out. And I actually bought, I found a DVD of the first season at Dollar Tree. And I actually bought it and like binged it so fast because I wanted to watch the show so bad. And it's such a good show. The first season is amazing. Jessica Biel is incredible. Such a good show. So it really depends like both seasons they're completely different but they are both mur murder kind of thriller mystery type shows um but they're just so like i don't want to say gritty again and they flesh out the story so much more and there's backstory and it's like suspenseful and um plays with your mind and it's just like ugh, such a good number five now we're getting to the top five these are the ones that are unbelievably amazing so deep deep so good um just my favorites right now so number five is dead to me this is the show that i believe christina applegate won an award for that show is again twisty turny sad as heck just gut-wrenching it's a gut-wrenching show and it is so beautiful and it's well written casting is amazing the story is amazing i'm getting goosebumps because it's Ah, I'm getting emotional. Like, it's a really, really good show. Made me really emotional. Um, I guess because the things that the characters go through is just very sad. And just the way they feel is so relatable and so palpable. Um, it's just a great show. Great show. Number four is called Unbelievable. That was a little a little foreshadowing. So this one um, I put above Dead to Me because this show is based on real stories. And it is basically about a serial rapist. And this rapist who spanned across many years who did this to many women. Assaulted many women. And so it's about the police in different states you know trying to find the same person and it is a hyper you know emotional hyper crime mystery drama um based on real things that happen and i think it's important to watch because it's like the reality of how effed up the system can be and um it's just also a really good show all right so we're getting to the top three number three is called elite this is another show that's in spanish they do have english subtitles or um english uh audio but it is not good in english at all a crime wow i like a lot of crime mystery murder shows apparently i didn't even think that i was that kind of person but they're just so good especially because after how to get away with murder came out i feel like a lot of shows went in that direction where everything became like you know forward in time and back in time and showing you little bits and pieces of things so you can put the story together little by little and then giving you different people who could be the murderers they're what 13 reasons why wishes they were elite is like gossip girl like a gossip girl setting with way better deeper characters with way better storyline way better plot just way better everything all right number two we're getting to the top two Number two is a show that I feel like I never hear anyone talking about. And it is so good. It's atypical. He has autism or he's on the autism spectrum. And so it is a show about him. And him in high school going through changes. Trying to gain autonomy from his family. Trying to become his own person where, where, where his mother is a little bit overbearing. And she's scared of him facing the world. And he's trying to navigate dating and, and, and just trying to apply for college and going to therapy and just all these things he's going through and it's a little bit overwhelming a lot overwhelming for him and getting to see things through his perspective but also his family's perspective and navigating that situation and seeing how it affects all family members it is such a powerful show and i think it's a it's an important show that i wish everybody could watch because we definitely need a little bit more of that sympathetic compassionate view and we need to see those things more anyway Okay, number one. I don't know why I'm smiling. It's like, I smile because this show makes me so depressed. This show, I feel like I never hear people talk about it, but the people who do watch it, we're like our own little community, and it really unites us because this show deals with things that no other show does. It is so introspective, and I don't want to say deep again, but it's very, uh, I can't find the words. 
I, I can't find the words. It just deals with things that people don't deal with. It deals with the core of why so many people have so many issues and the core of depression, alcoholism, all the diseases we have, all the diseases that we have that are mental and all the problems that we face and the mental illness that we face and the things that just make us vulnerable but also make us disgusting to people and it really like hones in on those things and shows us the worst of the worst but still trying to be the best and I, I just can't even begin I mean maybe if you like just YouTube it you might find people who can describe it better there's a guy here on YouTube his YouTube name is Shady Do Rags I love 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 the name um, and he does a lot of videos on Bojack I wouldn't recommend watching them until you watch the show but if you do want to watch one or two just to kind of get an idea um, to me he does like the best kind of overviews and um, introspective fleshing out type videos where he really like delves into the stories and dissects the characters dissects the things they go through talks about the pathology behind the things and there's just a lot to discuss when it comes to this show it's serious it's depressing it, it's dark humor um but it's so necessary it is not it's actually i'm not even being funny it's life-changing to watch i think it really has helped me as a person to face my demons i feel like it actually helps you it's almost like therapy in a way if i can say that but yeah if you're one of those people who's like i don't need help i am perfect then maybe this is not the show for you but if you're someone who's like damn i'm a garbage person i hate myself life is hard it's the show for you so that concludes my video i hope you guys enjoyed this list um yeah wow anyway anything you see in this video that i can link i will link it down below let me know if you want a tutorial on this like fall makeup look i don't know how i feel about it yet i don't know maybe it's the earrings i don't like I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> this wasn't depressing at all. <laughs> okay. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. And of course, stay glam. Bye. You like my lips look crusty. I can feel like they're crusty. They look pale too. This little baby hair is killing me too. Why do I do my hair? Show me. My God. Freaking, how do you spend so much time blow drying and then you still end up, you know?